this is uh, Empirical Ones, episode two, and we're here on a Sunday morning with myself, David, and Duran. Our topic for the day is leather, and we've got a guest on our show this morning. Uh, your first name is Min, right? Yes, sir. Last name? No. <laughs> Last name is No. And that's no. last name is No. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So, Men No. And so, we, we've got you on today, and basically, we want to educate our users on the significance of knowing the different kinds of leathers. We always hear about, you know, on the back of my belt, I've got genuine leather stamped. What, what does that mean? And is it, is there any validity to that? Or is it just all marketing and... And it's not genuine after all. So, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Min. Uh, no, uh, went to college with Duran. I met you a couple of times, David. Uh, I'm, I'm right now. I'm an engineer. I do. Uh, I work in nuclear field. Um, but I really uh, started working on leather because it's just very therapeutic for me. I love working with my hands. I love the process of design. And when he's done, just using it and seeing it age, there's just nothing like it. So um, that's when I really started really marketing myself, myself as a leather pressman. It's kind of weird. <laughs> so, so did you just wake up one morning and think, oh, I'm going to make some leather? Or what started you? No, I, I, like I said, I really like making stuff. And um, I kind of wanted to, I kind of dabble with woodwork, but it requires so much space. Um, and I, I, I was really into watches. And I just kind of got my hand, my hands on this uh, little piece of leather, and I made a strap. They were saying, "Hey, hey, you know, maybe you should start selling those." I started selling a couple of them, and I really started, you know, really liking it. And mm -hmm. yeah, that I had a good knack for it. So here I am. So you were into watches. Why didn't you go down the watches route? It got a little too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. To enter into this hobby, uh, it was a little more feasible, getting into leather. Absolutely, okay. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, when, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for about two and a half, three years now. Okay. Yeah. I've been actually uh, selling for two years now. Um, yeah. Again, this is more of a hobby. I'm a hobbyist. This is not my day job. Okay. Yeah. So you started with the watches, and uh, how long... So how many products did you make for yourself, let's say, before you actually decided, hey, I'm going to sell this? Uh, I probably made about 30 straps um, for myself, friends, or forum members. I started making wallops, little small clutches. You know, I really had nothing else to make for myself. But I still wanted to uh, really continue with other smithing, if that's a word. Mm -hmm. So I decided to start selling online. So, uh, I mean... You've got like a full spread out here in front of us. You've got watch straps, you've got wallets, you've got bags, you've got men's bag, women's bags. Is there something that that you like making most out of all of them? I love what, making watch straps because they're simple. Again, I this is where I my, where my passion started, and I have a ton of watches, and it's kind of you know shoelaces and shoes, right? You kind of uh, mismatch them, see how you like it. And so, yeah, I mean, I really enjoy my making making straps. Bags are another thing. Um, you know, you only need so many bags, but it's kind of cool to have, you know, carry your own bag while other people carry Chanel, Louis Vuitton, and people, those people ask me, hey, what kind of bags are, what kind of bag is it? And I say, oh, I made it. And there's no other feeling like that. And I mean, th these bags, they look, they look good. Like, I, I mean, this is, looks, looks like something you'd buy, but I don't see any, any, um, any branding? Branding steps, yeah. Uh, it's, it's step, uh, branding is something I'm working on also. I, I had a couple of branding designs and I kind of got tired of them mm. within six months' time. Yeah. So, you know, once I got tired of the branding, I stopped carrying those. So I just decided to leave out the branding, just make it very minimalistic until yeah. I come up nice. with something I really, really love yeah. mm -hmm. that really represents, represents me. Sure, um, sure. Yeah. So... Being a consumer and buying a leather product, you know, th this would be applicable to most of our listeners. Keep, walk us through the process of what goes through your mind when you're in a store and you're looking at a product. 
Is there like a five step process where you're looking at first the brand or just feeling the leather at first or just purely by visual guide? It's like a buying a car when you don't know. You just look at it, oh, this looks good. Or you just sit on it, oh, this feels good. And you just buy them. The more you know, uh, the pickier you get. These days, it's really hard for me to buy a pair of nice shoes because I don't want to pay, you know, 400 bucks and buy something that's not going to last me that long. Um, same with bags. Uh, uh, I, I have a couple of uh, nice bags. They're expensive. But, and, and before I started working on leather, there's no way I would spend, you know, $3,000, $2,000 on, on, on a man's bag. But now I see it. I appreciate the design. And I really like the, uh, the quality of the leather and the craftsmanship of it. So, you know, I think it's really justifiable for certain bags, right? Um, yeah, there, there are process, in, in, I guess, in, in, in that regards. So, if you're, if, if, say I'm with you at a store and I like this particular bag, what's the first thing you're going to judge or critique? Uh, I'm going to judge you if you buy a genuine leather. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's not genuine leather. Genuine. Was good. What's going on with that? Um, there, there. Are, you know, we can. There's a whole. What does that even mean? Yeah. Topic of uh, grades of leather. Uh -huh. The first one is full grade, and the second grade is a top grain. Then there's genuine leather, and there's bonded leather. Uh, I'll kind of go with uh, the first one. Full grain is actually how uh, first leather is made. Is kind of unmolested, right? They haven't really put a lot of chemical on them or send it down or anything so if you see all of my bag bags or straps you'll see a little little bit of marks a little bit of scars scratches here and there um, they are from the tanning process and again you know these weren't sent, sent it down if you look at I guess uh, wooded wooden table mm -hmm. these are the whole wood wood just straight cut just raw yeah raw wood right okay. um, that's the full grain mm -hmm. top grain is uh, basically left over from the t uh, full grain ones with a lot of scars they send those proportion off to get rid of that right right okay. to make it look nice okay um, this top top grain is actually still pretty nice but it doesn't have that the same fiber as the full grain because the, the tough portions are sanded off and they wouldn't age or develop patina as well patina is that that deep color that that bags mm. or leather would um, I guess get as, as the ages, right? Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Patina? That's patina, yeah. Okay. Kind of watches, you know, mm -hmm. get patina also, you know, a little bit of brown tint on certain things. And does it feel completely different from the full grain to the top grain, like as far as texture? Uh, touch? I would say so. Or I would say so. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they do such a good job these days. Um, it's not really, you can't really tell by looking. Okay. You really have to feel. And well, again, a lot of bags are dyed, right? I, I have a lot of this raw leather that's really bright in color. They're not brown yet. Um, it's m most, you know, almost beige looking, right? Beige looking. Mm -hmm. um, but most bags we buy are either brown or black. Mm -hmm. They are heavily dyed. So by just looking at them, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. Okay. Um, genuine leather is, I would say, plywood of leather. <laughs> so okay. it's not the top quality again they do a good job with chemical these days um, they bond it really well it's not the top coat it's not right. it's not, not the, the second not the yeah. second where does where it fall and also it's really it really depends on genuine leather um, okay the, yeah <clears throat> you can, there can be good genuine leather I actually have a genuine leather coat or, or leather coat that I bought before I started leather working I still think it's a good quality decent quality but uh, yeah, if I were to buy it again, I'd probably invest a little more and. So it so it's like it's like when you go shopping and you buy something that's uh, organic. Let's say you get that label of organic. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you're not sure the right, quality right. of that organic right. label. Right. So it's the same thing with genuine leather. Yeah, yeah. You're not. You're never gonna see a full grain, hundred dollar shoes, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, same with thing with bags. You're not gonna see anything other five hundred dollars that's full. Uh, I guess anything brand name. There, you're just not gonna find full grain leather that's five hundred dollars or less. And why is that? Is that because the the leather just simply costs more, or limited supply? Is it yeah, it's a, yeah, it is a supply. Back in the nineties, uh, we kind of talked before uh, earlier today, mm -hmm. uh, before we started uh, recording. Coach used to make really really good bags back in the eighties and nineties. 
Um, they actually, if you look up online, they're called the Legacy Line. All, all their bags had a little uh, uh, emblem, I guess, a uh, little stamp in the back. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, made from uh, glove tan leather um, and quality of full grain leather, handcrafted in the United States. Mm -hmm. These were maybe two, three hundred dollars back then. If you find the same bags, these will probably go over a thousand dollars because it's just really hard to get your hands on. And I was in Louis Vuitton store just two months ago, you know, kind of just, you know, following my wife around. She likes that store. A lot of girls like that store. <laughs> and they had a little table where they put uh, a monogram, right, the little stamps, um, I guess the, the little right. letters on their bags. Mm -hmm. And on the top of the uh, table, it was fitted with a full grain leather. And I've never seen a leather that beautiful before. I buy a lot of leather. I import some myself. Uh, I, I know some tannery. I call them, you know, send me the best you got. And they quote me. And it's, you know, a few hundred dollars for... So let's stop right there. Do you get samples before you actually commit to a full roll? Or? Sometimes I have to buy samples because some of these tannery, you know, they're really well known. Mm. And they sell, you know, hundreds of uh, size of leather, which is, you know, thousands of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And as a consumer, I say, hey, can I get a sample? They're probably just... Ignore my. It's not portion. worth it yeah, to yeah. them. So I just get one side. Side is probably you know, ten to fifteen square feet. And if I if I like it, I, I keep ordering from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If I don't like their quality, I just move on. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So when you first bought your first roll, so it comes in a roll, is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you bought your first roll, it was yeah. sort of a leap of faith. Right. right. Okay. It's kind of luck of the draw if you ever yeah. want to purchase your own. Yeah. That's the whole thing too. Um, because of those those uh, luxury giants buy so much leather, they get the first dibs, right? Mm -hmm. Understandably, because mm -hmm. they, they pay millions of dollars to these right. tanneries. So, and a lot of them have their own tannery also, tanneries also. They get the first dibs on the quality ones, and you know a lot of customers like me, we get the second hand. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So you mentioned a fourth tier being bonded leather. Mm -hmm. That's the best... Uh, what is that? I, I mentioned that Genuine leather was plywood. This one would be uh, making leather with sand dust. Uh, <laughs> Put glue on it and make, make it with sand dust. I don't, I don't think I've really seen any bonded leather material. So why is it called bonded? Is it made like plywood, like with glue and particles of... Uh, I'm sure of it. I have, again, I haven't really come across it. So, well, uh, so yeah. it, it could be like a manufactured... Basically, basically. Like, I mean, even genuine leather is manufactured. Um, it, it goes through, you know, a gluing process. It goes mm -hmm. through a rolling process. No kidding. Or a pressing process, right? So, but it doesn't start out as a lump of leather, right? It's actually flat, right? Like they're not, they didn't just mix this all with glue and then roll it. Right, right, flat, right, 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 right. Okay, right, right. okay. So there's, I don't know. When I think of manufacturing, I think of raw materials, like almost like powder. Yeah, yeah. And then they start it, and then they form uh, yeah. it. Yeah, they they, they would like be that. bonded. They would be bonded leather. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, back to our situation. I'm in the store. So the first thing you're going to judge is, are you you're looking for this stamp, this label that says it's full grain? It's, uh, it's again, it's hard to tell. Um, if you walk into Chanel, Louis Vuitton, you're not gonna find uh, this is you know full grain, top grain. You either probably have to know what to look for or have to ask. The representative. Uh -huh. um, some of these leathers, like I said, they are they're already dyed, right? A lot of these merchant merchandises are already dyed and um, already have their embossed their design on it. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to tell, even by touching it, is this top top grain or full grain. Um, so unless it's leather that you know it will age in certain look, like like patina, right? A lot of these bags will gain patina, or some of these bags don't even matter if it... it, it, it because you said it's patina. coated so much. Coated, right, right. Um, I guess a good example is Chanel um, design. Uh, I guess Chanel jumbo bag. I don't know, Duran, if you know what it looks like. No, sir. If there's a woman, you can probably Google it. Mm -hmm. Every woman will know what I'm talking about. It's just a simple black bag. Mm -hmm. um, if it's black, you don't really care about patina that much. Mm -hmm. And it's not this smooth vegetable tan leather that I brought, they are processed differently. 
So it's not really going to gain again patina, right? So in that case, top grain is okay. And, and I've never seen genuine leather from high quality leather store before. So I'm sure if they're full grain or at least top grain. And is it marked? Does it say top grain on it? Some do. Okay. Some do. Uh, mm -hmm. Most don't because they don't want to limit themselves. Right. To right. Top grain. Yeah. If they uh, can. Yeah. They'll probably just say 100% leather. Uh. Yeah. Uh, when I when I talk to a lot of uh, representatives representatives at the store, they don't even know what leather is made of. Mm. Um, yeah, I again I bought a two thousand dollar bag this past year. Um, it was it was made from deer skin. Mm -hmm. It was full grain deer skin. If I were to pay and just get the leather for that for that garment, it would have been seven eight hundred bucks okay. for me to just get get that leather right. It's uh, deer skin is kind of rare. Deep chocolate deer skin. Perfect condition, you know. But it's not your run-of-the-mill deer that's through the neighborhood. Or it's it's something that, I mean, this isn't like, is this from a reindeer or this from a? That actually, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know deer skin is very, very, uh, really light, and really, uh, really, really soft. You know, back in the day when I would get a leather jacket, I would want something that's soft. Yeah, really soft yeah. on my skin. Yeah. But then you have these bags that I mean, you have this one bag that you first showed us. It's it's very rugged, very tough, but you wouldn't use this for a jacket. Right. So does softness or hardness of a jacket dictate its quality? It does not. It there are different tanning processes also. Quality of leather is one thing. You you pick your leather to tan, right? There's different tanning pro tanning is kind of um how leather is processed, if you will. Okay. So is it like aged? Uh, they are tanned for a few months, mm. a lot of them a few months, some cheaper, cheaper ones a few days. Um, again, these are the vegetable tan leather. I highly uh, expect our, our listeners to, or I want the listeners to Google what vegetable tan leather looks like. Okay. These are very light leather. Um, these are normally a little bit thicker, stiffer. They will fold and they will leave a mark. And a lot of chrome tan leather, or again, uh, vegetable tan leather, take a very long time to be tanned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And it's, so it's expensive, right? Expensive for tanneries to make create these things. Uh, chrome tan leather, chrome as in, you know, uh, metal chrome, right? Mm -hmm. Chrome tan leathers are cheaper and easier to process, and there's more. Uh, chemical that goes in, and uh, it takes a, lot, a much much shorter time to make it much cheaper. Yeah, and yeah. So that's the second thing you're looking for. So first we talked about the grade of the leather. Mm -hmm. Second, you're looking at the tanning process. Right, right. So how does one tell vegetable from chrome? Chrome tans are chrome tan leathers are again they are pre dyed. It'd be actually, I'm going to be honest with you, it'd be really hard to tell unless you really know what you're looking for. Because like you said, they color them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you can even color the chrome tan leather to mimic vegetable tan leather mm. um, in color, but texture is going to be different. I can't really tell you how, what the texture is going to feel like. Um, a lot of patent leather mm -hmm. is a good example. I guess it's, not, it's a bad example of chrome leather, but that's an example of a finish. You know, very plasticky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, again, you know, a lot of patent leathers have really good quality. Um, Chanel is a good example. They make patent leather from the 70s. They are still, you know, nice and kicking these days. Um, but that's a easy way to kind of tell, like, if leather is shiny um, or too shiny and not very supple, I guess. Um, that's likely mm. chrome tanned. Okay. So, you're judging the kind of the tan it has. What else are you looking for that, like, okay, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, uh, let's say top grain. It's uh, got what appears to be a vegetable tan with the patina, right? Right, right, right. What else should stop me from buying this bag? The, I, mean, I guess what we just talked talk, talked about is quality of leather or the grade of leather. After that, I mean, it's. Um, 
how was it constructed and how do you like it? How so you like the on the how this is constructed part, you've got some stitching. Are there things in the stitching of the product? I mean, you've got parts of this bag where it's stitched, parts of it where it's not stitched. It's actually it looks like it's nailed or pinned together. Does that dictate anything whether you buy or do not buy a bag in the stores? Absolutely. And sometimes not. Wow. <laughs> I, I make all my products by hand, mm -hmm. meaning I hand stitch them too. A lot of people say, oh, I, I hand make them, but I run it through a sewing machine. Sure. I, can, I guess uh, I can kind of uh, explain the difference between the two. If you stitch by hand, imagine number eight or sign, infinite sign, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have one string, one thread, and you have two needles on each end. And you make a loop that looks like eight. Mm -hmm. That's how it goes through when you, when you stitch by hand. That's called a, a saddle stitch. A very, uh, that's very basic stitching that every leather craftsman uh, perform, how they do it. Mm -hmm. And for machine stitching, or you can call it lock stitching, instead of eight or infinite, you can imagine uh, capital B, if you will. So mm -hmm. only one side of the leather is uh, being, I guess, punched by thread, and the other side locks that thread. That's the flat side of the B, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then that that three, you know, the the, the curved side is where top of the uh, sewing machine would drop their pin and lock that stitch. That's mm -hmm. the difference. So for for hand stitching, right? Because it's number eight, if one part of the stitching breaks from one side of the leather, it's still holding from the other side of the all the other side, right? From the opposite side. Oh, right. That's interesting. But for the lock stitching, if one goes. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's yeah. the same line yeah. on that side. Right. How do you tell? How do I tell? A good giveaway is looking at the edge of the leather. When you see a very thin, leather, uh, thin stitching, it's usually uh -huh. by machine. Okay. This is that example here. Okay. Back to our bag. We're looking at it. I'm, I'm noticing the stitching. You might be able to tell, but what what's the biggest thing I should look for other than of course, a markup in price because saddle yeah. stitching is much more expensive. Yeah. Um, how do I know it? I mean, this is I'm getting my money's worth. Again, it's like, hey, you know, what car should I buy, right? Um, for me, I look at I'm I'm really anal. You know, I look at it at every angle for my needs. For somebody, you know, even paying to make my bag, it costing me two hundred dollars, two hundred dollars in leather, and and hardware, right? For some people, it's stupid to pay $200 in bag period. I have a Levi's bag, a duffel bag that I brought over here. Portions of it is fixed with some of my leather skills. There are holes everywhere. Um, I bought that for 50, three years ago. It's done me well, but it's falling apart, right? Mm -hmm. For some people, that makes more sense to them. Mm -hmm. So it's really what you want. Do you want to pay $2,000, $3,000 and get something that, that will last you, you know, 20, 30 years, or do you want to get a pretty decent bag, pay $20, $300 at, um, say, Jack Spade, get a, a canvas bag, and that will last you five, 10 years. Are you happy with that? Sure. You mentioned tanning. There's a tannery named Horwin Leather, H-O-R-W-E-E-N. Uh, you've probably, you probably know a lot of brands that use this leather. Um, Red Wing Boots is one yeah. of them. Yeah. Quality boots, right? Great leather. These guys are in Chicago. Um, they've done it for over 100 years now, family business. And they do an amazing job with this tanning process. So you're saying these brands, you know, we hear Louis Vuitton, <coughs> you know, Red Wing, you know, Al Edmund, they usually don't do their own tanning. They're, that's a specific. A oh, no. Uh, Red Wing might even have their own, own uh, tannery, too. But because Horwin is so well known, Red Wing and a lot of other shoe companies actually get their leather from Horwin. I see. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know, Chanel would have their own tannery. Maybe they do. Because in my mind, I feel like, you know, Blue Vuitton <clears throat> and let's say Coach, <clears throat> and they're, they're obviously competitors in the same market. If they're sourcing their leather from the same tanning company, 
what are we paying? Why are we paying different prices for the different brand names? Is it just in the design, in uh, the logo? It, yeah, it's the design and the logo. The same thing as watches. Rolex make their own, own their own movement. Seiko make their own movement, right? But there's just there's one movement movement as in what moves the watch, right? Mm -hmm, what right. takes the watch. There's a company called Swatch, right? Swatch owns Omega, Tag Heuer. Uh, they own a lot of companies, and they make this movement called Eda movement. Eda is a very well-known movement. Cartier uses it. Uh, like I said, Omega uses it. A lot of high, really high uh, quality or really uh, luxury brand watches use it, mm -hmm. right? Um, Hamilton watch uses it. Mm. The Hamilton that I have here is just a few hundred dollars. Tag Heuer or Cartier, you know, they cost thousands of dollars. They have same movements. Why are they different in price? It's with the casing, the packaging, the logo, how it's made, I guess, how outside is made, right? Same thing with bags too. Um, Louis Vuitton, you know, um, I would hate to compare them with Coach because they're much more expensive and they're really, really well made. But for everyday users, it doesn't really matter, right? So let's say whatever's hot, let's say the number one bag, that number one brand that's hot out there, is that necessarily going to get you a better leather than the fifth spot? Oh, absolutely brand? not. Absolutely not. One leather company that I haven't mentioned is Bally. Have I mentioned it yet? No. No? No. Nope. Actually, uh, all the men bags that I own is from Bally. I don't own a single Louis Vuitton bag because they are just too expensive. It's ridiculous. Uh, that's why I actually made this uh, bag because I wanted a certain uh, design called Carry All 45, meaning there's a design called Carry All, but the, the dimension of it is 45 centimeters, mm -hmm. right? For that specific dimension, I made my bag. I, didn't, I just didn't want to pay $2,000 for a canvas bag with leather strap. So in short, no. There are a lot of leather companies out there that make excellent bags. Small, small companies, micro companies, much like myself. And I, I, I think they're much better for your dollar. So this is interesting, right? Yeah. Everything that, you've, that we've just spoken about, it's really hard to discern the good leathers in, in the higher top tier brands. Mm -hmm. But from the independent designers, which I guess you would call yourself, yeah. it's easier to use what you've just told us, everything that you've told us, to kind of evaluate their product because they're not gonna have a highly produced product. Right. It's gonna be more raw, you're gonna be able to see yeah. what went into that product. Yeah. If I see something with more grain, is that, does that necessarily mean it's more expensive? That's not grain you're thinking about? I guess it's grain, it's grain. Um, but it's also type of leather. It's not a quality of leather. Um, a, lot, a lot of grains are like faked. You know, those, they're, you're talking about those fine... The ridges. Ridges, right? The yeah. fine grooving and... Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Calf skin, sheep skin, or deer skin, they all have those. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times they're fake. Yeah. The, the deer skin that I have has lots of really a lot of grooving. You're probably like that one. Let's circle back to David's questions. Yeah. So, do we know we're buying a good product? So I'm just going to list off a few. Yeah. And you tell me, Yeah. are you paying for the name or are you paying for an actual like, right. quality product? Yeah. Uh, we've already discussed Chanel. Go. Chanel? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> for a small handbag, $5,000 is ridiculous. But I bought my wife for our one of our you know anniversaries. I bought her this uh, jumbo, classic jumbo design Chanel bag. You might laugh. It's $5,000. But because it's limited, very, very rare. It actually, uh, it went up in value. So, okay. Well, you mentioned value. You mean in, in the event demand. that you're going to resell it at right. some point. Right. I'm, I'm purely talking about supply and demand there. Okay. Uh, when it comes to leather itself, no. <laughs> okay. $5,000 is ridiculous. Okay. No, that's, that, I mean, that's really interesting, right? So, what you just talked about is you're buying as an investor. I mean, are you buying as a consumer or you're buying as an investor? You could be buying as both, but... If you're if you're someone who is investor oriented, it doesn't matter what the product, how much the product costs. It could be ten thousand dollars. It could be five thousand dollars. But if you're if you know for sure that it can be sold for at least that, if not more, down the road, something that will stand the test of time right. uh, in terms of value, right. then you know it, that is one way objectively you can look at a product. Yeah. 
So let's, let's stay on that for just a moment. When you go through a store, let's say, are there some bags or certain bags or certain brands that you go in there and you say, this is still going to be worth what they're asking for 10 years from now? Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, How do you know that? It's, it's just a design. It's a design. Simpler the better, usually. There are classic designs, Porsche cars, right? But the Porsche 911s. Mm -hmm. Classic. I, I say Louis Vuitton over and over because everyone knows what Louis Vuitton is. Not that I endorse it, but everybody knows which bag I'm talking about. If I say Speedy, they know what, what I'm talking about, right? That's that brown canvas bag with, with uh, the LV emblem and, and that leather strap, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. The reason I, I am not putting my, this duffel bag on, in, in the market is because it cost me over $200 to make it. And it took me you know, over 10 hours to make it. So for me to justify making this bag and selling this bag, it'll have to be over $1,000. Like, it'll have to be around $1,300, $1,400 to evaluate my time because, you know, I mean, I, I really value my time, right? Sure. Yeah, so for everyday consumer, would they buy this or Louis Vuitton, you know, put in a few hundred dollars more and buy a Louis Vuitton bag? If I, I were an everyday consumer, I would even look at this bag because they don't know me. They don't know my, what my product looks like. They don't have a third-party reviewer that's reviewed my bag to make it, you know, really worth my money. They, they, they don't know that. For me, this bag is much better, better, right? The one that I made is, is all leather, it's great quality. I love it. I know everybody loves it, my wife loves it, my brother loves it, but for everyone else, it hasn't really passed that test yet. Okay. Right, because they don't, they don't know. They don't know, they don't know, yeah. That's why I kind of stick into the wallets, watch straps, because they are easier to move, shorter time, you know, less shelf life. Um, and I have over, I have over, you know, I have hundreds of reviews on, on, the, on the site right now. What site is that? I, I just sell it on Etsy right now. I, I shut down my okay. website because I didn't have time to. Etsy's a better platform anyway. Yeah, yeah, just easier. Uh, okay, so going back to our brands. Yeah. Chanel, you're paying for the name, not the... Yeah, yeah, yeah right. definitely pay for the name. Okay. Uh, let's keep going down our list. So, are you paying for the name or are you paying for the product? Uh, yeah. Next one is Louis Vuitton, which we mentioned. Yeah. Name uh, or product? Name. I mean, name. If, you, if you see 9 out of 10 celebrities carrying it, it's for a name. Uh, Hermes. <laughs> Definitely name too. Uh, I, again, I've been in the store a couple times because it really intrigued me. Uh, a bag is a price of a car that really intrigued me, but how good of a leather is it? I've touched it. I couldn't tell between that and Chanel. So I could not for, tell. for those of you that didn't hear that, that David said Hermes, and that's the technic that's the actual way that it's pronounced. It's spelled H E R M E S, is that correct? Yep. Yep. This is this is more of your your more elite brands that maybe not the run of the mill person may know about. Uh, the iconic bag of Birkin bag, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. purely um, you're pay paying for the name. I think so. Okay. <laughs> I would hope so. Next. <laughs> Gucci. You know, uh, I know where we're going right now. We are kind of naming all the name brands, mm -hmm. right? And that's the whole point of name brands is for the recognition. Um, I'm, I'm not looking down on that. I, you know, again, I bought my wife a couple of uh, Chanel bags. I'm not looking down on that, but for the most of these luxury bags, yeah, quality is there. Quality is definitely there, mm -hmm. but it's branding that makes the pricing so much higher. Right. Yeah. They've invested so much. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, what would you put your money towards? So I'm just gonna keep going down the list, and the first name that comes out, you let me know. So we mentioned Gucci. There's Prada. There's, you know. Cartier, but that's more watches. Uh, Burberry, that's not necessarily leather specific. Fendi, and we mentioned Coach. Which one of those? I'll put my money on if the value and the quality wise. I put my money on the '90s Coach, but not right now. If you go to the store now, you're not gonna see any full grain leather. Maybe they'll have a couple. Um, they're so expensive. Right now, basically, you know, in the market, any major brands, you pay what you get. You can go to J. Crew right now has a couple of uh, canvas bags with leather handles, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, it's like 120, 130 dollars. They look nice. Leather's pretty bad, but it looks looks, looks nice. It'll probably last you a few years. Um, again, you know, you're paying for the brand, and you get what you what you pay for. And from that, I think Bali is a good balance because it's balance. a yeah. Okay. Bali is a luxury luxury name, luxury brand, but they have that this, this very same quality, and their bags okay. are, you know, reasonable at just over a thousand dollars for the, for the most part. And the branding's pretty subtle, right? There yeah, isn't yeah. a whole lot of badging right, or right, emblem. Right. right. Okay. <clears throat> so Bally's. So what about like Tory Burches and things like that? Is Tory Burch like a different class? Yeah, I mean they they are known for that DB, uh, little canvas look. That same thing that Louis Vuitton has, right? The 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 speedy look. Um, what I mean by canvas is that it's that non leather material. That's constructed with only oh, handle and the straps are. Leather. So you have a mix match of material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 really from. That's really Louis Vuitton's market, and Tory Burch. Um, is doing that even you know, Michael Kors is doing it now, you know. Uh, I mean, everybody's doing it. So is stuff like that like, is that a is that a fad? <clears throat> Let me ask you that. We talk about timeless things. Yeah, um, Louis Vuitton Speedy Bag that's been around for decades and decades. And mm -hmm. the Speedy Bag has this yeah. mix of materials. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's that that canvas is is stood against time and weather, different weather. Um, it's handed down for generations. Um, if that piping breaks, you can send it to Louis Vuitton and they'll fix it. And what, what's this piping? I think it's the first time I mentioned it. Piping is the little round tube looking construction in a bag that you see. Mm -hmm. That's what holds the, the construction or... Um, keeps the frame. Keeps the frame, yeah, exactly. That's basically the frame of the bag. That's the edge. I think we went over this in the first podcast, but I am sort of a utilitarian purchaser if you, if you will, of, of things. So, uh, last podcast, we talked about the barber jacket. We talked about sort of its timeless nature and um, something that will most likely hold its value through time. And so, when I, when I look to buy something, I just want quality that will last me, um, that looks good. I don't like branded things. Right, right. You know, I don't right. like that's sort of gaudy to me. Yeah. Um, and so maybe most guys would, would agree with that and you know, maybe that's what they're looking for. So for the, let, let's even step down and say your run of the mill consumer guy, um, you know, he's just looking for a good bag that's gonna last him and that has, that can kind of accentuate his taste but not make him seem like he is chasing after the name brands. Mm -hmm. um, you know, out there for the normal consumer, you've got your Kenneth Coles, you know, your J. Cruz, your, your things like that. So, I mean, we see so much Kenneth Cole all over the place. Is, is the quality of that, I mean, is that good enough for, for your run-of-the-mill person? Or, I mean, would you, are there other brands that they can maybe turn towards or some other products that that You're talking sub two hundred dollars. Yeah, let's talk about sub two hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. J. Crew, Banana Republic. They have certain bags. Banana Republic, by the way, used to make gorgeous shoes. They used to use top grain for their shoes also, mm -hmm. and leather sole shoes. They stopped making those. Mm -hmm. What do you think that is? Um. It's cost. A lot of those shoes will have to be handmade. At least the soles, right? They'll have to be stitched handmade and. It's much more expensive than right. uh, rubber sole. Yeah. Mm. Um, for sub twenty dollars, I think you you kind of nailed it. Um, you know, Kenneth Cole is another brand. I guess uh, they make. I guess they have everything. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of stay within that range too for for fashion reasons, right? Yeah. Okay. So to, to wrap up the consumerist segment of this, I'm just gonna. Name a few categories. Yeah. And tell me the, what you would buy in the store, what name you would buy. Oh, okay. 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 So, first one, boots. Boots. Uh, I'm a big fan of Red Wing. Red Wing. Yeah. Jacket. I have a jacket. 
Not a, not a big fan. <laughs> is it the weight? Is it the smell? Leather jacket? Yeah. Uh, kind of looks too. It's, it's not just me. <laughs> it's not very me. I'm a very okay. uh, jolly dude. <laughs> okay. You're buying a purse. What a purse, uh, whatever my wife, wife wants. <laughs> okay. Good answer. What about Amanda? Man bag, uh, I'm, I guess uh, I'm a big fan of Bally. Okay. I'll just make one. Wallets. Out of the big name brands. Who makes a good wallet? Who makes a good wallet? I don't know. Good enough for me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they, I mean, they're all same to me, right? They're all like same. If you go to the Gucci or whatever, those uh, we were talking about high quality leather, you know, companies, and they're all same to me. Okay. Sure. I mean, just to speak to that. Yeah. My father had a Louis Vuitton wallet, right? Someone bought for him. Yeah. That thing, after like four years, he's used. He's truly used it. It, it just looks like it went through World War Five. You know, yeah. like it, yeah. it's it's torn up, and. I would have thought, you know, you buy one of these things that lasts you a long time, but, yeah. you know, it's, you have to take care of these products. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it, was it leather? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it had, you know, it had the Louis Vuitton pattern all over yeah, the yeah. outside, your typical Louis Vuitton wallet. But, you know, those, um, again, they're not hand-stitched. Those are, most wallets are not, not what I make, but, it, you know, if you buy it from luxury brands, most of those are stitched by machines and they're really thin stitching too so it's easy to bust them mm. right because uh, I mean especially you're sitting on them all the time you know people are you know 150 to 200 pounds on that you know little stitching it will burst sometime so okay yeah so one more question on that if I wanted to get a leather I always thought softer the leather the longer it will last me is that necessarily true uh, I would, yeah I wouldn't say that because genuine leather would be pretty, can, can be really soft too yeah okay, okay. You gonna say something? Yeah. Good. Mm. Polo actually makes pretty good quality leather products for their product, product uh, price. Mm. Ralph Lauren, um, but Ralph Lauren is kind of um, unpredictable in pricing too. If you go to the like, Ralph Lauren store, you know certain bags are like three thousand mm. dollars. But you know I've bought a couple of wallets from them that are just as good as any other luxury brand that they, that you mentioned. Polo. Yeah. Okay. It was uh, it was actually full grain leather mm. that, that I got. Yeah. Mm. Last me a while. Hmm. So this hobby, what is it called? Is it love? Is it lo <laughs> <laughs> love. Uh, if I wanted to get into this, mm -hmm. how does one get started? Um, making you, you, handling leather. It, it's called leather making. What Le leather making? Uh, le leather smith. Leather, leather making, smith. Yeah. Leather okay. Making, yeah. yeah. How does one get started? Um. You can buy a piece of leather and just buy a couple of tools. There's everything online. There's nothing you can teach yourself online. Um, yeah, just tools are fairly cheap. Um, the hardest thing is getting good at stitching yourself. Also design, you have to think of a design in your head um, because you want it to be unique, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's the hard part. But once you have your design and your skill, I mean, that's, that's really it. Yeah. But there's, uh, there are a lot of other shops too around here um, yeah, just get a get your hand on it's not that expensive you can get a decent piece of leather maybe just go on eBay just type in vegetable tan leather and like two three millimeters thick which is four or five ounces or five six ounces um, ounce by the way is the thickness of leather um, and you buy a small portion of it try to make a wallet you know there's a lot of DIY, DIY do-it-yourself tutorials and yeah this should be too bad that's kind of how I made my first strap. Okay. So, have you ever made belts? Because I'm looking at these watch straps. I mean, they just look like miniature belts to me. Yes, I made ton of belts. I'm actually wearing one right now that I made. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. Any of the straps from my bags, my shoulder, shoulder straps on my bag is the same as my belting leather. Yeah. Same technique. The finish is the same. Punching hole is the same way. Edge groove uh, beveling is the same way. Yeah. Wow. Tell us how do we find your product? 
uh, I will send you a uh, name of my Etsy store. Mm -hmm. And can, if you can put we'll that up, we'll post it on the podcast. Post, yeah, post on the yes, podcast. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, leatherweight. Leather again. Leatherweight means thickness of weight, or weight means thickness of leather. Okay. And it kind of matched my personality, as in featherweight. You know, I'm ah, into kind of that. Yeah. Leatherweight. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, a little pun there, but not that brilliant pun, no. <laughs> so you have actually on your on your site here there. There is a person by the name of Colin. Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. So explain us that. That's my uh, alter ego. <laughs> yeah, nice. So Colin. they'll find you under Colin? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, at first I put that up there. I, I actually changed it. I haven't changed it back to Min yet, but because I'm putting in my address, like my name there and my information there, and I actually imported to different countries too, from you know uh, Great Britain to Australia to Canada to Germany to France. I mean, it really goes out to all over the world, and it felt kind of weird putting my real name there because, especially because I'm married and I have a family. Um, that's kind of how Colin started, hmm. but I should change it back. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you know when I used to go out to drink, my I used to call myself Jamal Wang. <laughs> Jamal Wang, nice. <laughs> Kind of throws people off. That's too funny. But my friends go to my website and say, like, who's this calling? Is that you? <laughs> okay, man, so my last question. Are you going to make iWatch straps? Oh, I actually uh, made a ton of them for specific customers asking for them. <laughs> How do I get on that, that list? Uh, let me know if you uh, want them. <laughs> Are you going to feature them on your Etsy site? I haven't done that because... No, um, I, I really should. I really should. I just don't have an iWatch to, uh, or Apple Watch to, uh, to demo. Yeah, model it with. But the demand is there. For demand sure. is there, yeah. Because, I mean, people want yeah. things other than what everyone else has. Yeah, this one shop, I won't name the shop, it's uh, not far from here, probably 300 miles from here. Um, and the, the, he makes really good straps, but he charges about $100 for the Apple Watch strap. Because the watch itself is kind of expensive, I mm -hmm. guess, right? And they're kind of, you know, demand is there and it's kind of unique handmade strap, so he's milking it, but you know, I, I don't like doing that. And I, I probably sell it at half the price these days, yeah. Mm. Okay, so we'll be on lookout for that? Yeah, yeah, because my, yeah, my two piece strap is about $40, and that Apple um, iWatch hardware is about 5 to $8, depending on where you get them. So oh, that's, yeah. I could definitely make it for under 50 yeah. And I think that's a really, really fair price compared to some of these other guys. Right. Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. And you can find a lot of cheaper alternatives too if you don't want handmade straps. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So these, uh, these stitchings on your, on your watch straps, are they machine or hand? None of my items are machined. They're all hand stitched, all hand cut. So let's let's summarize what, what we went through. We went through sort of what goes in making leather. Okay. Right. We went into the things that you might want to look for in products and, and kind of the difficulties that, that you would come across when judging a piece of uh, piece of leather from a fine fine leather distributor mm -hmm. or designer. Mm -hmm. um, we even went to the everyday consumer and sort of what what he would buy, let's say your kind of Coles and your J. Cruz and your Polo and you know, whether that was whether that was sufficient, you know, for 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 their purposes, for their taste. We went into the specific uses of leather bags. You know, your sizing is a really important piece. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you want to consider this as a hobby, the cost to enter You can probably buy your first small project set for about a hundred dollars. Including tools and you and know, leather. Yeah, That's and not small bad. piece of leather. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, and you can probably make a wallet and maybe a cell phone case, um, a strap. You can probably do that. Yeah. Cool. What's the, what is your biggest inspiration? My biggest inspiration for, for this hobby. For this hobby, uh, my watches. <laughs> Love for my watches. You know, for yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's the biggest piece of advice you have for someone trying to get into this? Rock on, man. You know, you gotta practice a lot, really. Uh, don't get frustrated. 
Stitch, stitching can be pretty tough, but you know, if you get frustrated, uh, if you're not patient, this is not for you. Yeah, it's but you love the thing. process. I love it. You love whether you make a mistake or whether you, oh, yeah, you learn yeah. from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I don't love making mistakes, but I love learning from it. I guess. There you go. Um, okay. More than once, I've you know poked myself with a needle. Um, I've bled. Uh, <laughs> Blood, sweat, and but tears. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but but I love it. There's nothing like it. Just play, you know, music in the background, and you kind of suck in, get sucked into it. Yeah. Wow. Hey, uh, thanks for your time, man. Thanks, man. Um, we know that you know you you're a busy guy, and uh, you know you you kind of set aside some time for us to kind of explain your process and what you do and why you do it, and even how you do it. And um, thanks for coming over and educating us. Yes, be sure to check out his store on Etsy. It's uh, Leatherweight. It's, uh, do a search for that. And let us know what you think of the podcast. And if you would, please rate us uh, if you enjoyed listening. So thanks again. For sure.